the port of Cartagena to the Gulf of California. It's the most endangered sea mammal in the world, a lovable-looking porpoise called the vaquita. It's estimated that only 200 remain alive. Most of the vaquita population has for decades been decimated, caught and snagged in the gillnets of local fishermen. Now a desperate race is on to save this creature, which is referred to by many as the panda of the sea. Correspondent Mike Kirsch traveled to the vaquita zone in the northern reaches of Mexico's Sea of Cortez with a leading marine scientist. He brings us this report. Mexico's Gulf of California, also known as the Sea of Cortez, a rich marine habitat Jacques Cousteau referred to as the aquarium of the world that may soon see the last of the vaquita porpoise, as only an estimated 200 remain in existence. More often photographed in death than alive, tangled in the gillnets of commercial fishermen netting king mackerel and Baja's coveted and delectable blue shrimp exported to the United States. Rare are live images of vaquita like these from a fisherman's cell phone camera. Called the panda of the sea for the dark patches over their eyes, resembling those of China's endangered giant panda, the vaquita lives exclusively in this 4,000 square kilometer area in the northern reaches of the Gulf of California that in recent years has become protected and off limits to gillnet fishing under federal law in Mexico. The vaquita is the most critically endangered marine mammal species worldwide. Mexican marine scientist Dr. Lorenzo Rojas has spent the last two decades of his life trying to save them. CCTV recently joined him and a team of government monitors from Mexico's National Commission of Protected Natural Areas, observing fishermen routinely fishing inside the boundary markers of these protected waters. We then observe other fishermen illegally dropping more than one gillnet in the water. And that's illegal. You, you're not allowed to have two nets on, on, on your fishing boat. So this guy just dropped the net. He's dropping another net, which is clearly illegal, and he just doesn't care because you're not the enforcement. It doesn't matter how much resources and effort the, our enforcement agency puts into it. It's difficult to enforce this area. For example, these two government enforcement boats can't possibly keep an eye on the 800 fishing boats of fishermen launching from the community of San Felipe. Hard men with families to feed, generations of them using gill nets to fish where they please. Self-reliant men not thinking twice, for example, about using this pickup truck to tow not just one boat from the sea, but a fellow fisherman's SUV stuck in the sand behind the boat and the boat he was towing from the sea. Never mind the boat ends up torpedoing into the back window of the SUV. The attitude here, that's just the way it goes. For many, the same attitude applies for the gillnets killing the endangered vaquita porpoise. Sad, but that's just the way it goes. However, Mexico's government has had enough. Passing a new law this past June, ordering gillnet fishing banned altogether by 2015. Fishermen will be required to start using alternative fishing gear like this vaquita-friendly trawl, with openings in the netting for the vaquita to, in theory, swim free. Additionally, some fishermen have taken part in a federal government buyout program, receiving loans to start alternative businesses, like building these tourist lodges. Problem is, most of them remain empty, as most tourists, many from the U.S., are staying away, still weary of Mexico's reputation for drug war violence. Regardless of the challenges, Luis Fuel, Mexico's national commissioner of protected natural areas, says saving the vaquita is a top priority. Mexico, he says, is going to insist until the end to avoid losing the vaquita. The Mexican government relying on Dr. Rojas and his longtime colleague Dr. Armando Yaramillo to continue gathering vital updates on the vaquita, tracking how many might just still be alive out here with the use of high-tech underwater acoustic devices that make the vaquita's high-frequency clicks audible to the human ear. When you first heard this, this frequency, this sound, was it music to your ears, or how do you describe it? <laughs> Way like, like chicken bumps. <laughs> or goose bumps that Dr. Rojas has as well, he says, 
when he watches these rare cell phone camera images of two vaquitas swimming together. But when you see them live, it's so exciting. It's difficult to explain in words what you feel. It's always, uh, you know, basically it's like watching a, a ghost. Dr. Rojas says ultimately the vaquitas' fate symbolizes an international rallying cry to save other endangered species around the world. If vaquita disappears, uh, you lose the most critically endangered cetacean species right now. That sends a very bad message worldwide. You allow one to go, and then it comes kind of a chain reaction. It's like saying, well, just give upon saving other species. So you better start working with these ones so you can prevent the other ones to reaching this point. And vaquita is a unique species, and you have to save them as you save uh, pieces of art or art masterpieces whatever masterpiece you can think of. And Vaquita's a masterpiece, that's... A Picasso? It's a Picasso, it's a Monet, Da Vinci, Michelangelo, you choose which one you like better, but that, it's a masterpiece of the nature. Dr. Rojas believes it's not too late to save the Vaquita.